Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last June, many Republican-led states have moved to ban abortions completely. What had been a constitutional right for nearly 50 years has started to disappear in some places almost overnight. 13 states enacted full abortion bans, almost all of them with no exceptions, even for rape or incest. Five states have bans ranging from 6 to 20 weeks. In one of those, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a new ban after six weeks, but it has not taken effect yet. It's pending a review by the Florida State Supreme Court. And then there are the states which have tried to ban abortions but have been blocked temporarily by various courts. And that doesn't include South Carolina, where the state Supreme Court ruled in January a law banning abortions after six weeks of pregnancy was unconstitutional. Lawmakers there have been working on new legislation, and despite the Republican supermajority in South Carolina, the new legislation has been held up by five women in the state Senate. They are the only women in the state Senate, and they're known as the sister senators. One Democrat, one Independent, and three Republicans. And two of them join us now, Republican State Senators Katrina Sheely and Sandy Sen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I just want to give our viewers a heads up. If the vote bell rings, the senators will have to leave immediately. So I'm going to get through as many questions as I can with you both. Uh, you know, you both have taken a stand on this issue in your legislature. What is the why behind your unwavering stance? If, if we could start with Senator Sheely. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. And we are uh, proud sister senators who are happy to take the stand for the, the women in South Carolina and actually for the women all over the country who who want to tell you that it's, you know, women don't want the legislature and the doctor's office with us. It's It's our decision to decide whether or not we want to have, you know, an abortion or not, but women don't use abortion as birth control. I think when women go out on Friday night, they don't say, I'm going to get pregnant and want to have an abortion tomorrow. That's not what we want to do. Women who have an abortion do it under great thought. They, you know, they struggle with those uh, decisions. And I think that, you know, the, the men who are making these decisions for us, because in South Carolina, the majority of the legislature is men. In the in the Senate, there's 41 men and five women. In the House, uh, there's 124 legislators, and I think right now there's 16 women. So, and, and part of those agree with the men. So, you know, it's a struggle in the state of South Carolina to make these decisions. I just think that we should be able to make those choices for ourselves with our doctor, our spouse, whoever is making those decisions with us. It's not the legislator, legislature's decision. Okay, and, and before I get your thoughts, Senator Sen, I just want to follow up really quickly, Senator Sheely, because I know that you voted yes on that six-week abortion ban uh, in the past that has now, you know, been held up by the court and all that. Uh, so when you're describing, you know, your thoughts on this whole situation and yet that's your, your voting history. How do you square those two? Well, let me tell you, this: the women of the uh, Senate, the Republican women, introduced a 12-week um, first trimester bill. And we introduced that at the first part of this year. And we were told that the women didn't need to introduce that legislation, that we needed to let a man introduce the legislation or it wouldn't even get a hearing. So the only option we had was to uh, go along with the men's bill, which was six weeks. Now, do I think 22 weeks is too long to have an abortion? Yes, I do. So to get a six-week bill, with the exceptions of rape, incest, fatal fetal anomaly, excuse me, and life of the mother was the best option we had at the time. And we gave that to the House of Representatives in South Carolina. And the House of Representatives continues to ignore what the Senate's trying to offer them. And they want no exceptions, no, uh, they want an abort, no abortions after conception, which nobody can really tell you what conception is, but that's what they want. So that's why I voted that way. But what we really wanted was a first trimester bill, and that's what the Senate Republican women offered to the Senate. 
and we couldn't even get a hearing on that. Wow. Uh, Senator Sen, you are one of three Republican women uh, among your, your sister senators. What kind of reaction have you received from your colleagues and the public? We were seeing images also of the infant-sized spines from an anti-abortion group, uh, Students for Life, that were sent to you. I mean, what is going on? Well, actually, I will tell you that, that in my area, I, I'm in the Charleston area, and I would say we're a little bit more progressive there. Um, so I have not gotten very much pushback at all. I am Catholic, though, so I've gotten pushback from members of my church. Um, but other than that, I really have not gotten terrible feedback, um, and most of my feedback has been very positive because it is a balancing test. And, and I agree with Senator Sheely that 22 weeks is too long. Um, at that point, some mothers could feel the baby moving at that point. But I also don't want to be a judge for, for other women. I thought six weeks was too short because I know that uh, a lot of women do not know that they're pregnant by six weeks. So I felt like the balance was in the middle. And for me, that was the easiest spot to be is is 12 weeks now would i negotiate a little off of that maybe just to get this thing behind us but that's not what we're seeing in the house the house for them it's an all or nothing proposition uh they are not going to take it up I, they're going to take actually they are going to take it up but there's already 600 amendments on the bill um if they pass it over to us as they have amended it again they were not supposed to change so much as a semicolon is what we told them and they added 14 pages to the bill. So we're gonna be right back where we were round four in seven months. And unless one of us dies or gets sick or something, the outcome's gonna be predictable. We're or they unelect us. Well, that that's comes the following year. <clears throat> we have been threatened. Um, I have been threatened by my leadership that they were gonna be running somebody against me in 2024. Really? really and that's a no-no they're not supposed to do that but he said it to a group of reporters so but let me ask you know what that's been doing? to both of you i've been getting money yeah, out please have been sending contributions so that's kind okay of cool. so i mean yeah your constituents i mean you're describing you know your personal beliefs for the both of you really uh are different from what you're proposing but it sounds like you're getting feedback from your constituents uh supporters who are saying this is what we want. Is, is that part of the narrative here as far as what you all are trying to present, representing your people? Well, I'm getting positive feedback, and, and I can tell you nobody's going to agree on this. We couldn't get five Supreme Court judges to agree. They all wrote separate opinions, so you're not going to get 180 lawmakers to agree. The best you can do is try to get somewhere where there's some sort of consensus. But with the House being it, we don't want any abortions, and we want no exceptions and stuff like that. We're just not going to we're not going to get anywhere. And so the only thing we can do is be a thorn. And we've right so far, we've been a pretty big thorn. I think as long as we can keep them from passing legislation, we're going to keep it at 22 weeks, which is not an ideal situation. An ideal situation would be a first trimester uh, ban. But I don't think we'll get it there until the House decides that they can't push us any further. I think that the the women of the Senate have to stick together. We still need the uh, three, men. three men that are sticking with us. And there are three Republican legislators that are sticking with us. And, and we don't need to not acknowledge them because right. if they don't stick with us, you know, we could lose very quickly. And, you know, Senator Davis and Senator Hembree and Senator Rankin are sticking with us. And when they stop, we could very well lose. And, and yeah. so we need to, you know, give them credit. But, you know, the women need to stick together. We're a bipartisan group of women, and we need to stick together and, and show our unity that we stand up for women's rights, but we, always, we also stand up for, you know, health care for women and, and what's right for us. You know, nobody goes to the doctor with men every day. We shouldn't go to the doctor with women and tell them what to do. To that point, how much of the fight in South Carolina is about abortion and how much of it is about control? Control. <laughs> I'm just telling you, plain and simple. Uh, we had one lawmaker who, who's one of the most um, 
I guess, the biggest foe over on the Senate side. And he actually proclaims that the only proper birth control is a condom. All right. And that's what the basis of this, what the House just added onto the bill. It sets up what's known as personhood. And personhood, I am telling you, is it we will really have no rights. But just think of that one one issue. If they get their way and a condom is the only proper method of birth control because it prevents the sperm from ever like touching the ovum and the others, you know, work in different ways, then that means only men will control birth control as well. It is not just about abortion. This is going to go further and further and further if we let it happen. And if we, one of us loses election, you know, that's what they're hoping. And they, they will be running somebody against us. They, they far outnumber us, but we're hoping that we're going to get more women to run as well. And that's really what we need. And that's the message yeah. we've been trying to get out. Yeah. Senator Sheely, your thoughts? We need we more women this conversation. in the state. Okay. Pl plain and simple. I love how you put it that way. And I, I want to just really quickly before we go here, what's going to happen when that vote bell rings today? Because we know that that's coming up. Uh, can you just explain that to our viewers? No, the abortion is not coming up today. It's over in the House. We have lots of other um, things we're working on. This is supposed to be sine die week for us, meaning this is supposed to be the end of the legislature. And we only, you know, we're supposed to be part time and we get paid a whopping $10,400 a year. And here we are getting called back and they're hoping for attrition. So we're, we're gonna have to come in when we're not supposed to be in session. A lot of people plan vacations, kids getting out of school, things of that nature. And they're counting on one of us not coming back. And that, that's how they're gonna try and win this year. I don't think they're gonna win it that way. Um, they're gonna have to, win it by taking us out next year if, if they ever win this issue. But we will be back and hopefully when we come back the next year, there will be more of us and, and we will, you know, we're going to prevail eventually. But I don't think that the five of us that we currently have will let that happen while we're still here. And hopefully when we do come back in 2020. What will that Four, be? 2025. Yeah, well, next, election. by the time next after the next election, there will be more women in the legislature because last year they took out a lot of women in the House. Right. They didn't take any in the, you know, because it wasn't an election year in the Senate, but they took out quite a few women in the House last time. So hopefully when it's election year next time, we'll get more women in the House, we'll get more women in the Senate. Or just moderate men Republican, not like crazy far left, far right. And in South Carolina, we have a lot of far right, and I'm talking really far right. <laughs> Okay, so looking for, you know, more diversity, representation of thought here. South Carolina State Senators Katrina Sheely and Sandy Sen, thank you so much for your time. The the Senator sisters, we, we appreciate uh, you giving insight on really what's what's making headlines right now. Thank you.